Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Here's your host, Cyrus Webb. Welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. But for our radio audience here in Mississippi at WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com, we're glad that you all could be with us. Also, it's tuning in to our friends at iHeartRadio and Amazon Music Podcast. We're glad you all could be with us as well. Today, we're talking about the connection with food. And you guys know, especially here in the South, food is one of those things that definitely brings people together, especially in different generations. Our next guest knows this very well, and she's been able to use that not only in her own life, but but also on her show on the Magnolia Network. We're excited to welcome Casey Korn to our program today. Casey is a classically trained chef, but she's also a food anthropologist. Her show on the Magnolia Network is called Recipe Lost and Found. We're going to talk to her about that, especially about how she's been able to help families and be able to recreate some of their family's favorite dishes as well. Casey, thank you so much for the time. really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So, Casey, this is an exciting uh, subject, especially for us here in the South, because we love our food and we love our <laughs> we love our family. So, of course, the connection of the two is so important. So as I mentioned, your show is called Recipe Lost and Found. Tell us a little bit about the show and and what viewers can expect from it. So my show, as you said, Recipe Lost and Found, um, is all about me helping people recreate their lost family recipes. Uh, You know, it's really sad sometimes with time and people passing, uh, we lose our connection to these dishes that we know and love. And I come in and help people recreate those dishes and put together all the pieces that they're missing so that they can bring them back into their family dinners. So, Casey, what is your favorite part of that? I mean, it has to be a great experience, I mean, for those that you're working with, but what is your favorite part of working with these families to help them create these lost dishes? I mean, it's all so fun, but I would say either all of the eating we get to do is really fun (laughs) Or just learning about all these different family histories and the food culture behind them. I mean, as you said, you know, I'm in the South, too, and being here, the the connection of food and family is so deep. And it's a really important thing and something that I think people feel really sad when they lose that connection. So getting to bring those memories and the nostalgia back to people is just really, really amazing. That is so cool. So, Casey, th- did this seem like a natural progression for you? I mean, I know you have a passion for food and family yourself. Did it seem just a natural c- progression that you would be able to do this for a living, that you would be able to find some way to be able to bring that passion to the world? Absolutely. I mean, and again, as you said so beautifully, the connection between food and family is so important and that food really brings us together, as you said, through the generations. But I think also across the world, you know, everybody eats. And so being able to show, you know, and highlight all these different family recipes, I think everyone really can feel a connection to losing a dish that they love. Um, You know, people come up to me all the time and say, oh, my goodness, I also have this recipe that I'm missing. And getting to do that for me is just so magical. And I just love being able to bring people back to the foods that they love. Well, Casey, I have to say on a personal note, when I was first pitched this segment with you, I, I thought about my grandmother who raised me, and, and thankfully I got to, to spend time with her in the kitchen. We lost her eight years ago, but I'm still able to prepare some of those same dishes for our family today. And so, you know, that, that part of that connection with her uh, definitely stays true. I mentioned something. I'd never heard of this before, Casey, so I'm so excited that you can talk to our audience about this. I mentioned that you're a classically trained chef, but you're also a food anthropologist. Talk to us about exactly what food food anthropology is and and what interested you about it? Yeah, so I mean, I food is pretty much my life and I never really thought I'd be a chef because I just love to eat so much, but it worked out <laughs> that I also became a chef. Um and I actually studied food anthropology um in college and what's so amazing about it is it's really understanding it's it's basically we are what we eat. Um, you know, yeah. understanding how the foods that we eat how they make us who we are, how they connect us to other people. Um, I think food is pretty much the most universal thing. You know, everybody eats. So being able to understand who we are, you know, individually and who we are amongst other people is just so fascinating to me. So getting to do that, but also, you know, like you said, you have your own story about food and your family. Everybody has these stories. So it feels like, again, an even more universal 
part of this whole thing, and that's what food anthropology is to me. Well, we get to see you do this with families on Recipe Lost and Found, Casey, but what about for our audience out there? How can our audience research their own uh, history and maybe you know, be able to make that recipe that their family members used to make? Well, I'll preface this by saying it isn't an easy process, even for me who does this for a living, but... You know, it really takes a lot of, you know, diligent work. You really have to figure out what you know about the recipe and the person who made it and then what you don't know and really start ticking off one box at a time. You know, what was the flavor that's missing? And then try a bunch of different things. Okay, well, that worked. That didn't work. Um, Go out and eat the dish as much as you can and see what works with those and feels familiar and what doesn't. Um, Try to cook it 800 million times and... See what works and what doesn't work. It's, it is truly a labor of love, but I think if you have it in you, you can absolutely do it. One thing that helped me, Casey, was writing down what my grandmother told me <laughs> that she used. <laughs> so yes, exactly. That, that made it so much easier, especially when it came to her sweet potato pie and her cornbread. <laughs> because, Ooh. you know, I... I Yum. never would have been able to do it on my own. So I, I was able to share that with the family members in the different states before she died. Uh, so say, hey, you know, if you guys want to be able to make this, this is this is what she, what she told me, and then I tried it, and it worked. So I think that is so cool. Casey, I'm so excited oh. for you and all, all the success you've been able to have. Congratulations on the show Recipe Lost and Found on the Magnolia Network. Let our audience know, Casey, how they can be able to watch the show but also stay connected with you. Awesome, yeah. Yeah. Um... So Recipe Lost and Found airs every Friday in August on Discovery Plus and the Magnolia app. And uh, you can find me on Instagram at Casey underscore corn. All right, Casey. Again, thank you so much for the time. I really do appreciate this and looking forward to speaking with you again. Awesome. Thanks, Iris. Appreciate it. And more than welcome. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live. Now let's go make today amazing. Take care.